Welcome to Accelero Health Partners Hip Fracture AudioCast. When considering the acute care admission for a hip fracture patient, we focus on three distinct process events. The arrival of the patient to the emergency department through preparation for surgery, the surgical event itself, and the nursing unit through hospital discharge. Today's audio cast will focus on nursing unit through hospital discharge, and we encourage you to listen to our emergency department to surgery audio cast in addition to today's. In the next several minutes, we will be highlighting key process improvements that help improve the care as well as the outcome for the medically complex patient population. Processes include creating an infrastructure to support the hip fracture program, Our second focus will be on length of stay and complication reduction through decreasing variability of care. And third, discharge processes that reduce the risk of readmission. So Luann, let's get started. Can you discuss how to put a framework together for establishing a hip fracture program? Sure. Well, the key to a successful program is really having an infrastructure. And this starts with a core multidisciplinary team that establishes a vision sets priorities and goals in order to manage the program. Members should include disciplines like a fracture care coordinator, our surgeons, hospitalists, geriatricians, unit nurse manager, and case management. From that core team, there would be sub-teams developed, which would create and drive change. Examples of these teams could be patient education, care pathway, perioperative, discharge, transition of care, and outcomes. These teams would meet a minimum of monthly, and the focus on process improvement would never end. Luann, metrics and outcomes become a key component of a program success. And currently, CMS really tracks mortality as their key metric for evaluating hip fracture programs. So can you share with us other metrics that would be important to measure in a hip fracture program? Yes, things like time to surgery, and we talk about that door to OR. In other words, the time they come into the emergency department until they go into surgery. Length of stay would be important, readmissions, as well as any complication rates. These metrics then become extremely important and directly tie into decreasing that mortality rate with this patient population. Michelle, could you share with us how process improvement could drive these metrics? Of course. And if you've listened to Accelero's hip fracture audio cast on reducing time to surgery for hip fracture patients, you have already learned key steps to reduce that pre-surgical length of stay. So here we will discuss improving post-surgical length of stay. Our benchmark performers are able to discharge 71% of their patients in four days or less. And I can tell you that doesn't happen by accident. It requires a diligence of that multidisciplinary team that Luann mentioned to ensure that success. Two key areas in length of stay improvement are complication prevention and variability of care reduction. Preventing these complications that will require additional care is essential for improving the patient outcome and creating a predictable length of stay. Accelero's comparative database tracks a broad range of complications and our benchmark performers are able to achieve a complication rate of less than 8%. And to give some context to that, that is actually two times more than the complication rate for a total joint replacement program. The highest volume of anchor admission complications in our database include urinary complications, and we see that both as infection and urinary retention. Secondly is respiratory complications. Those are primarily inclusive of acute respiratory failure as well as pneumonia. And the last one that we see in our top three are acute renal failure complications. It is important to identify the patient's risk of these complications upon admission and place risk reduction strategies in place to lessen the chance of complication. When we support hospitals in performing root cause analysis for renal failure, for example, we often find that those patients who have acute renal failure during the index admission have a history of hypertensive kidney disease as well as chronic kidney disease as an underlying comorbid condition. Exactly, Michelle. So focusing on these three high-risk complications, let's talk about some examples of risk reduction strategy. First, for urinary complications it's gonna be important to reduce or even eliminate Foley catheter utilization, and we must have effective bladder scanning protocols in place. 
Secondly, to reduce those respiratory complications, we know that early and frequent mobility is going to help. Um, we also want to make sure we have respiratory therapy on board and those patients are doing those all-important deep breathing exercises. You know, respiratory complications have seen the highest impact on our length of stays, typically requiring eight or more days of care and with a potential of over $3,000 of incremental costs. Thirdly, the, to decrease renal failure, it's going to be very important to have early identification of any of those pre-existing kidney diseases and make sure we have an effective fluid management protocol in place. Thanks, Luann. With the hip fracture patient population specifically, we know that one of the key risk factors to reducing readmission is the anchor admission complication prevention. So your ability to reduce complications is critical to long-term outcome for this patient population. One of the challenges we typically see in hospitals is that there are multiple surgeons and hospitalists caring for these patients. It's not as well refined as that subset of surgeons caring for joint replacement patients. So Luann, can you give us some examples of how best performers reduce variability of care? Yes, that variability. Multiple caregivers with different pathways certainly presents a challenge. We do know that reducing that variability by standardizing the care path creates an environment of efficiency, provides a platform for us to measure and enhance quality, which in turn reduces costs. Our best performers will begin by creating a standardized order set and pathway. And key components of that would be consistency with pain management, medication management, having those rehab and nursing protocols in place, as well as care coordination and education, which is typically led by a fracture care coordinator. Luann, you previously mentioned the fracture care coordinator is part of the core multidisciplinary team. Can you expand a little bit to tell us what their roles and responsibilities typically are? Yes, the fracture care coordinator is really a key member of the team. Typically, a registered nurse, they're responsible for creating and managing the consistency of care and the clinical and the operational outcomes of the program. The patient and family education is also a responsibility of the coordinator. By considering that patient and family as part of the healthcare team, it ensures an understanding of their procedure and treatment, which in turn can relieve that anxiety that we know they may have. Eliminating the fear of the unknown through education becomes very powerful. It also promotes the patient-centered care and has the potential to decrease complications and those readmissions after discharge. I agree with you, Luann. The Fracture Care Coordinator has been an integral function to help create consistency of care on the unit as well as ensuring a timely discharge. As we talk about creating an effective discharge, we see that 74% of the patients require post-acute care. So it is important to begin that discharge planning early in the patient's stay. Engage in case management as early as in the arrival to the emergency department to discuss the pre-functional status as well as the patient's current living situation with the family is important to really establishing those post-surgical expectations. After the patient has had their surgery, best practice on the nursing unit is to have a daily multidisciplinary huddle to discuss the patient's progression and establish a discharge plan. Having those clearly defined functional and clinical criteria for discharge allows that multidisciplinary team, which we see typically led by the fracture care coordinator, to quickly respond to the patient's post-discharge needs. Early notification of a post-acute discharge facility will allow for a timely discharge. And oftentimes, we see post-acute care facilities impose stipulations, if you will, on when they will accept the patients. For example, they might not accept patients after 3 p.m. on the weekdays or on Sundays at all. So knowing these requirements helps you expedite the acute care process and effectively manage length of stay. Yes, Michelle, you know, it's important that the post-discharge facility has received a warm handover from the hospital. This allows for effective clinical information transition. It becomes critical to the long-term outcome of the hip fracture patient, and it establishes care pathways and discharge plans that transition from that acute to post-acute care. If a complication then occurs during the post-acute care phase, Having a process to evaluate the clinical need of a transfer to the emergency department becomes very important. That firm process enhances the clinical care and can help reduce those readmissions. Thanks so much, Luann.
Although the hip fracture patient is emergent and medically complex, creating a structured hip fracture program with key metrics, we have seen reduce variability. And keep these three key elements that we discussed for managing the nursing unit to discharge in mind as we close. The th three key processes we focused on were first, it is important to create a multidisciplinary infrastructure. They establish the priorities and goals for the program. Secondly, manage length of stay and complications by decreasing variability of care through establishing order sets and pathways. And lastly, develop effective discharge processes that transition that patient from acute to post-acute care and prevent readmission. We thank you for listening to today's audio cast, and don't forget to listen to our other hip fracture audio cast, which addresses time of admission to surgery.